I really enjoy the University Research Expo as an opportunity to get everybody's ideas from all over campus in the same room at the same time. It opens up to potential for collaboration and interdisciplinary research, and I think it's fantastic for the students to showcase their work in this format. Um, which I think really motivates them and gives them confidence um, in their scholarship. So to me, that was sort of the most fun element of the Research Expo. One of the qualities I love is not only the opportunity to see original research from my colleagues and from our students and certainly in their, in their joint research projects, but the utter joy in seeing students and colleagues present their work. I was eager to do it because um, it's fun showcasing your work and I think it's really helpful to explain and you know analyze your work and figure out what you're doing. I kind of fell in love with my project. I wanted to keep learning. I wanted to see how far I can expand on the project. It's kind of like for my own personal goal. I wanted to obtain good data. I wanted to you know get some stuff I can present. So this is their project that they can take ownership over and I think that's really important for us to see what our um, community has done and I think it helps to um, build community within our students, within our faculty. And so when we had to pivot in the spring to go into a virtual um, delivery, it was again the opportunity to show the richness of our fields and our incredible intellectual dexterity. Although we couldn't meet at St. Xavier to present our research, I was thankful that we were able to put up our information on Canvas on the virtual expo. Um, and that way, you know, I was able to look up other work that my peers were doing and, you know, um, learn more about um, the other departments at St. Xavier and what they're, what they're doing. And I'm glad we could do it online this year as well, um, just so that the students weren't missing out and they could still um, present their research and also challenge themselves to present it um, in a different format um, to give themselves um, more experience. Because it shows whether or not you can adapt to a different type of format but still ultimately reach that same goal of disseminating your research and getting to see your peers research. I, I think that we have to constantly be exploring new ways to communicate and I think that this uh, mode uh, where we're at right now in this sort of Zoom chat is one example but of course the virtual expo being on Canvas was just another mode another means of communication. I think that it, it seemed to be a particularly successful one. We were able to get ideas together, even if we weren't all in the same room. Hi everyone, my name is Anaí Velasquez. I just finished my junior year. I'm a studio art major with a minor in graphic design, and I like to experiment with different mediums. However, photography is the medium I'm most comfortable with. I photograph young women, including myself, and one of the key things explored that one can make note of is the energy and growth portrayed by these women. Um, when shooting portraits, my goal is to have the person feel comfortable and to bring out a little of who they are into the photograph. I like to push for the subject to feel almost glamorous and embrace the glamour of who they are. Um, throughout the years, I have been able to work multiple times with some of the women in my series. Um, they are my friends, my family, and people that I admire. A key result of this project was being able to see the growth and comfort and relationship built from being photographed multiple times. Um, at some point, it it turns into a collaboration between the photographer and subject rather than just the photographer directing the whole time, which is something that I found really interesting. Um, for me, it was more so um, analyzing and looking into all the portraits that I've taken throughout the years and discovering that this relationship can be built. Hi, my name is Tiffany Abrams and I just graduated with a Bachelor's of Arts in Criminal Justice and a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology. And my project for the expo was Perceptions of Prostitution, What Drives Opposition. My interest kind of stemmed from being a criminal justice and a psychology major because that this topic kind of 
intertwines two disciplines. And basically what my project was, it was a series of two studies. Study one examined unguided participant beliefs about prostitution by allowing US adults to self-generate up to 10 thoughts about prostitution. Because when you just say the word prostitution, you can have someone with two totally different viewpoints about what prostitution encompasses, you know, rating their beliefs about this construct that apparently has more than one meaning. And then study two used the themes that were generated in study one to examine whether opposition to sex for money exchanges from opposition, uh, stems from opposition to lead to sex for money exchanges in and of themselves, or if the opposition is due to the negative external factors that people associate with prostitution. So kind of getting at the nitty gritty of what really does drive uh, opposition to prostitution. And we found that a significant amount of people were more opposed to the negative factors condition than the neutralized condition. Um, and we found that uh, their reasons for opposition. So they were more opposed to the negative condition scenario because of the physical abuse that was involved and all the negative external factors that were present in that uh, condition and not in the neutralized condition. Hello everyone, my name is Cody Bush. I am a mathematics and biochemistry double major with a biology minor. And my research topic talked about the different antimicrobial properties of silver nanoparticles inside of weak gluten biofilms. And we are going to test them for an alternative for medical first aid bandages. The reason why we chose weak gluten for our biofilm was because it was cheaper to synthesize they were biodegradable, and with the silver, they would show antimicrobial properties. We had some pretty cool results. One of the first results was as we increase or decrease the concentration of silver, it's directly proportional to the effects of the antimicrobial properties. So if you increase the silver, you have stronger antimicrobial properties. If you decrease the silver, you have weaker antimicrobial properties. Um, However, when we incorporated the silver into the biofilms, it showed weaker antimicrobial properties than the silver alone. So if we just put the silver on uh, one of the bacterium, it was stronger than including the silver into the biofilm, probably because we had made the biofilm with several techniques in the lab. So it might have, in a sense, decayed or decreased their properties, but they still showed really big signs. I mean, you don't want to have you don't want to administer straight silver to a patient. Hello, my name is Nancy Montes. I just finished my junior year at St. Xavier. I am a major in psychology and I'm minoring in philosophy. So for my project, I worked alongside Dr. Barbage, and the focus of our study was um, cultural differences in earliest childhood memory. Um, so we, what we did was um, ask people about their earliest childhood memory and then have them date it so that we can look at how old they were um, in that memory. Um, we kind of based this study um, from previous studies. Um, in which they studied um, U.S. Um, group versus um, East Asian groups, and they found that there was a difference in that, and that that difference may be linked to um, ideology, specifically collectivist groups versus individualistic groups. So what we did in our project, we took it a step further, and we analyzed four different groups. So we used, um, or we had European Americans, Asian Americans, African Americans, and the Latinx groups. And one important finding um, was that there was a significant difference between the ages um, in European Americans and African Americans. But there was no other significant difference among the other groups. So that was interesting because that was quite different from previous studies. 